So to get started creating your free USCIS online account, you can go to this website at myaccount.uscis.gov and on this webpage, you can click on create an account and that's going to bring you to the sign up webpage. Now you can also do the same by going to the USCIS website at uscis.gov and on the home page you want to navigate to sign in and click on create account and once again that's also going to bring you to the same sign up webpage. Now when you're creating your free USCIS online account it's very important that you make use of a primary email address as all future communications from USCIS will be sent to this email address on file. So here I'm going to sign up with my email address. And once that's done, I'm going to receive this confirmation notice saying that USCIS has sent me a confirmation email to my address on file. The next thing I'm going to do is to go to my email address and here I receive an email from my account at uscis.dhs.gov. Now the first thing I'm going to do to this email address, my account at uscis.dhs.gov is to add this to my contacts and that's going to ensure that every future email I receive from this address is going to come to my inbox as opposed to going to the spam folder. And once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and click on this link to confirm my email. And then that's going to bring you to the terms of use and you want to read this, make sure you understand. And when you're finished, you can click on I agree. And now you have to create your password, making sure that your password is at least eight characters long. And once you're done, you can submit this. And then you're going to get this confirmation page saying that your email address has been successfully confirmed. And now it's going to ask you to choose a two-step verification method. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm going to select the option of receiving an email whenever I try to sign in into my USCIS online account. And after doing that, it's going to bring me here asking me that I should enter my verification code, but it prompts me that a verification code has been sent to my email address. So I'm going to go to my email address and look for that verification code. And I see that I received an email from my account at uscis.dhs.gov. I'm going to find my verification code. I'm going to copy that and paste my verification code in here and submit. And once you've entered the correct two-step verification code, this website is going to provide you with a two-step verification backup code. Now, this code is important because anytime you change your mobile device or anytime you change your phone number, you will be required to enter this backup code in order to access your USCIS account. So make sure to take a note of this code or you can choose to export this as a PDF and store that PDF file somewhere on your computer or somewhere on your mobile device. And once you're done, you can click and proceed. Now, next up, you would have to provide answers to five unique security questions, and these answers will be needed anytime you plan to reset your password. Now, you can choose these questions from the drop down list, but make sure that any question you choose is different from the other four questions. Now, make sure to keep a note of the answers you provide to any one of these questions in the drop down list. And once you're done providing responses to these five unique questions, you can go ahead and click and submit. And there you have it. Now that's going to bring you to this welcome page where you're going to be asked what you want to do. If you'd like to edit your profile or if you want to log into your USCIS service account. So if you choose the option of logging into your USCIS online account, you're going to be brought to your USCIS online account dashboard. And on this dashboard is going to ask you what you want to do, whether you want to track the status of a paper file case or if you want to file a form online, or if you have a legal representative who needs to access your account by entering a passcode, or if you would like to verify your identity. So let's say you want to track the status of an immigration case that you filed in the mail. Well, what you can do is you can click on the add paper filed case. And here you can enter the receipt number that's contained on the form I-797C that you received for the immigration case that you wish to track. And when you're done entering that number, you can click and add case. And once you're done adding the receipt number for your immigration case, whenever there's an update on this case, USCIS will send you an alert prompting you to log into your USCIS online account to see the latest action that has been taken on this immigration case. And on the other hand, if you choose to file a form online, you can select this option. And as you can see, at the time of recording this video, these are the USCIS forms that are currently eligible to be filed online. And these are the form I-90 for those filing an application to replace a green card. 
the Form I-130 for those filing an immigration petition on behalf of an alien relative, the Form I-539 for those who want to extend or change their non-immigrant status, the Form I-765 for certain non-immigrants who intend to file an application for an employment authorization, and for those who want to file applications for naturalization. Now, if we take a look at the Form I-765, you can see that not all applicants who are filing an application for employment authorization are going to be able to do so by filing the I-765 online. And at the time of recording this video, you can only file the Form I-765 if you belong in an eligible category, such as an F1 student filing the pre-completion OPT, the post-completion OPT, and the 24 months STEM OPT extension, as well as other non-immigrants who are filing this I-765 under a category of temporary protected status. Now, it's very important to note that if you go ahead and file a USCIS form online and you do not meet the eligibility category as described on this webpage, your application is going to be denied and you're not going to receive a refund on your application fee. So make sure to read the eligibility categories for each of these USCIS forms that are presented online. And if you don't fall into one of those categories, then you must send the paper form to USCIS.